Okay, next news. Um, Dalit boy and his two friends killed in Nepal by family of upper caste girl he wanted to marry. In Kathmandu, Nepal, a 19-year-old Dalit boy and his two friends were killed allegedly by the family members of an upper caste girl he wanted to marry in western Nepal. The murders took place on Saturday, May 23rd, when, excuse my butchering of this name, uh, Nabaraj Bika, along with mem a number of relatives and friends, went to the house of his 17-year-old girlfriend, uh, Shushma Mala, who was supposed to get married to another man the next day. The girl's relatives chased and attacked the group, where he and his friends died on the spot. Five more were injured, and three are still missing. Um, Twelve people have been arrested for their involvement in the incident. Susanna, people don't know what Dalit means. Um, well, should we have our... Untouchables. So, yeah. so okay. So, really quickly, for people who don't know, in in Hinduism, you have upper, you have different castes. You have upper caste, lower caste, lowest class, and outcasts, which is the lowest of the low people, which are called Dalits. And as Shobham is a Dalit himself, is aren't you a Dalit? Yep, a Bengali yeah. Dalit. Uh, so you are. So Shobham is from the lowest of all, <laughs> lowest caste. He's an outcast. He's they, they're so low that in Hinduism that they're called untouchables. Like, they're so disgusting that you can't even touch them. And Shopam is from that cast, so he's a... Yeah. We have I mean, a, I'm, uh, one difference between me and them all, like, in Bengal, in my region, untouchability was never, like, rigidly practiced in the society. I mean, yeah, there were still discriminations, but it was not rigidly practiced as in North Indian states. And stuff. Right, so... The, here they killed these people because what? Because they were trying to marry an upper class. What's the upper, the highest upper stuff? The highest caste girl? Like were they the upper caste people? What? Not, the, not the highest. Just not the highest. Brahmins or the uppers? The uppers. Yeah. Uppers. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay so you're, you're the thing, like, yeah, the four castes, main caste, Bra Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra, and then the Dalits the were the outcasts. They are like the Wait, main. So who's the highest caste? The Brahmin. The Brahmin. Brahmin. Uh, but what were the castes of the girl that this not Dalit The was? Kshatriya, the second highest. So even if th these people, even though they're not the highest caste, they still think, feel so superior to this Dalit that this was like a. Oh, yes, they are supposed to feel superior according to Hindu texts. Right. So they feel, this is kind of like Islamic honor killing, right? Like they felt so disgusted by this yeah. boy taking their higher caste but girl. It's kind of it's kind of justified. Okay, first I had to mention like even among like even just let's say just the Brahmins. Even among Brahmins, there are several castes of Brahmins and they yeah. all think they're superior than the others. <laughs> so okay. that's the yeah, yeah, they all like, think they're superior than they, like, yeah, my kind of Brahmin is superior than that kind of Brahmin. Oh, so even the untouchables have subcasts. Yeah, even, yeah, I am from one cast of untouchables. You're, there are many, uh, you're way more untouchable than me. Like, I am untouchable, but you are more, un yeah, just yeah. I have a question, though, Shipham. Right. Is it common for this to happen so much in Nepal because I do hear about it yeah. happening in India and uh, Bangladesh but and I know that there's Hinduism in Nepal and there's other issues but the I mean, fact Nepal that this has was in Nepal concentr... Nepal is the country with the highest concentration of Hindus even more than India I mean 70 I think 72 percent of Indians are Hindus but 80 or 82 percent of Nepalis are Hindus Right, but is it common that they have this type of caste yeah, it's, on caste yeah. violence in Nepal? Yeah, it, it's not very rare. Some places it's like more progressive, but Nepal is a very small country. It's not that big. So, yeah, I have a friend in Nepal who says, yeah, people are very casteist. And even last, I mean, they have many Hindu superstitions. Like even last year, Armin Ali and I, we uh, commented on a case in Nepal where the woman was. So abandoned, I mean, banished from her house because she was uh, in her periods and mm -hmm. she died outside in the hut. I remember that, yeah, and I remember hearing about that too. Je Jenny yeah. is saying I would give a massage to any Dalit because they, apparently they're untouchable, but Jenny is like, no, they're not. I would give them a 
free massage. Uh, Shepam, you need to go collect your free massage from Jenny. <laughs> yep, I'm, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so yeah. here are some just, texts. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, here are some texts I wanted to mention. Like, uh, there are many laws. Like, in one of the, I think it's the Manusmriti. Yeah. Uh, in case, like, a woman enjoys having sex this with is, a higher... Okay, wait, let's be cl clarify what you're doing. This is Hindu scripture that you're trying to... Yeah, this is Hindu scripture. To show us that this is actually based on Hinduism religion. This is not, like, a cultural thing. This is actually Hinduism. Yeah. Right, go ahead. Right. Yeah. So, in case a woman enjoys having sex with a man from a higher caste, that act is not punishable. But mm -hmm. if the woman enjoys having sex with the lower caste, she is to be punished and isolated from everyone. This is so is much so like Islam, because in Islam, for example, men are allowed to m marry people who are lower, for example, Christian or Jew, okay? Uh, but women are not allowed to marry anybody who is lower. Women, Muslim women are only exclusive to Muslim men. W Muslim women are not allowed to go marry somebody that is lower. So so you're saying in Hinduism is the same thing with, with the yeah. caste? Okay, okay, wow, okay, very similar. Okay, I mean, on. Hinduism and Islam has many similarities. They don't want to admit it, but they have yeah. many. <laughs> and <laughs> just another one, like, this This one justifies the killing, kind of, in a way. So, like, a Shudra, I mean, the lowest caste, just above the untouchables. It's literally, they, they are considered the slave caste. I mean, right. they are literally the slaves because th their only purpose is to serve as slaves to the upper caste. And they cannot be free. Yeah. That's the only and, purpose in Hinduism. And the Dalits, the untouchables, get the worst jobs. Yeah, in, like the, the toilet cleaning, latrine cleaning, stuff like that. Yeah, or touching dead people, like in, you know. Yep. They're given to the uh, low, low, to the Dalits. Ex-Muslim atheist is actually pointing out something that is very uh, true. He's saying most Indian Muslims, I don't know if it's most, but a lot of Indian Muslims are outside of Kashmir were Dalits. And the reason why that's very interesting is because Islam in India capitalized on this whole caste system by going to the lowest caste of Hindus and saying like, look, in Hinduism, you're so low. But if you convert to Islam, all Muslims are equal in Islam, right? So you could go switch from Hinduism to Islam and all of a sudden being from you could go from being the lowest Hindu to all of, to being equal to all your Muslim brothers and sisters in Islam. Again, this is not a defense of Islam because Islam has its own hierarchy. The hierarchy of Islam is like Muslims are here and everybody else is inferior. But what, when you become Muslim, your 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 worth is the same as other Muslims. Okay, so, so that that was so a very powerful. appealing. That was a very appealing message to the low, uh, to the Dalits, to the outcasts in India, and they they if they were very effective at recruiting a lot of Hindus to Islam. But go on, sorry. Yeah, wait, my my friend is in the live chat. Wakif. <laughs> okay, okay. So, I, I, anyway, so ex-Muslim atheist, like he's not entirely wrong. If I have to uh, say about my own caste, like during the colonial times, the people from my caste, my specific caste were well, like not given social and civil rights by the upper caste people okay so they were like yeah you know what we are not being uh, recognized as um, people we are being treated as like the inferior life form sometimes even below animals and stuff so you know what fuck Hindus fuck India we are gonna side with the British and foil the plans of independence <laughs> among oh. Indians because they were like, yeah, because the British, the colonizers, they started the caste reservation. They promised them that, yeah, you are lower caste, but we are not Hindus. That doesn't matter to us. We promise you that because of your uh, poor backgrounds, we will give you reservations in education and offices. So they were like, great, mm -hmm. we'll have the British. And so, and they started foiling independent plans. And that's why the British gave many of those families the title mm -hmm. of Biswas, which is which means trustworthy, which is also my surname. I got I mean, it. What, why would any Dalits remain Hindu? Like why would we like oh yeah, yeah this most, is most converted to Islam oh. and like oh but, here's a, here's a religion that's 
Cons consider you the lowest of the low, and you should respect it. Uh, I mean, yeah, every that would be like, "Well, yeah, fuck this shit. What the hell?" Like, exactly. I mean, <laughs> exactly. I mean, exactly. Right. Like that's the thing. Like the upper caste Hindus continued from the Mughal and the British times, and it still continues to this day. They just wanted the lower caste to identify as Hindus because they wanted to fight the Muslims and the British away from the country. And But after they. The the interesting thing is that even when you leave Hinduism, to the eyes of the Hindus, you're still a Dalit. It doesn't matter if you become atheist, yeah. Christian, Muslim. To the Hindus, you once a Dalit, you're always a Dalit, and yeah. they always treat you as a lower that's caste. Why, that's why even Muslims and Christians have castes in India, right? Right. Because they right. had an ancestral caste, but they never change. So caste. how? So wait, so this, these two people, how many people killed? So they killed these two people because they were marrying an upper caste girl, right? Are they going to get punished for this? Like, how is the, are they arrested? I think, yeah, they were arrested. They killed three, the boy who wanted to marry the girl and his two of his friends mm -hmm. who came along with him. And I was about to, yeah, a quote verse, which kind of mm -hmm. justifies that. Okay, so it says like a Shudra woman, uh, I mean, a Shudra who has an intercourse with a woman of a higher caste. If the woman was like unguarded, like she had no like guardian with her to see, protect her, anything like that. If she was like independent and free and stuff, that man would like uh, I guess he would be castrated. I think that was the punishment. Uh, he would be, uh, lose the offending part, which is his penis. And but if the woman had like a guardian and she was not independent, she was actually protected and guarded and stuff. And then the man had sex. Uh, the Shudra, my low, lower caste man, had sex with the upper caste woman. Then it's punishable by death. Okay, so Shubham, in, given that you're a Dalit in Hinduism, which one is more, which one is more valuable, a cow or you? A cow, obviously. <laughs> like in Hinduism, okay. a cow. So yeah. You... I mean, there are there are texts which mention like this. I mean, you have to like. People, many Hindus, like they just quote those verses saying, "Yeah, this verses uh, respect equality for all uh, people, or for all beings, for all living beings." Uh, living beings. But the verses are like, "Yeah, you have to respect cows, dogs, donkeys, horses, and even the Dalits." <laughs> oh, oh I, and even the Dalits, you have to like. That's how much respect is important. You have to even respect the Dalits. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, well, and it comes last to all of those. Okay, interesting. And Anyways. also another thing. Also another thing. The the uh, the cast of the girls' family was Shatria, uh, and the Shatrias are like their their purpose is they are the warrior cast. Their purpose is to kill. And in the Gita, which is the most holy book in Hinduism. Oh, the cast of this girl was the warrior class. Yeah, right. I wish she I was, was the Chetri, which is a, a part of the Kshatriya caste. So wait, so the the what was the highest caste? What, what was it? Brahmins. Brahmins. That's the that's the head of the god, right? And the lowest yeah. caste, the lowest caste is the foot of the god, but the, the outcast, caste, yeah, the lowest caste, they're, the they're, they're, the, they're, they're not anywhere on the, they're not, they're not from god. They're not from god. So so yeah. the lowest caste is not the Dalits. The lowest caste is like the feet of the god. The yeah. sorry, the the out uh, what the Dalits are are not the lowest caste, they're the outcast. So they're not even yep. they're not connected to any god in any way. And the warrior caste is what? The arm? The warrior, the arms, yep. Yeah, because that's where you hold the sword, isn't it? Right. I mean, this would be cool if nobody believed in it and it was just like mythology. It's actually pretty like it's kind of like Game of Thrones kind of shit, right? Like you can yeah, be you like, oh my god, that's actually... fascinating. Right. You can actually read in the stories and be fascinated, but yeah, in practice they're just horrible. And I was I was about to say like in the Gita, which is the most holy book in Hinduism, they actually say I mean, the uh, Krishna who is revered as God in this book, he actually convinces Arjuna who is from the Kshatriya caste to fight. He didn't want to fight in a war, and Krishna basically convinces him throughout like one or two chapters that. Hey, listen! You are from the warrior class. Uh, warrior caste. Right. Your job is to fight. And, the, and don't, the, don't, worry, don't worry about lives. Lives will end, whether you, they end naturally or you end them. They will end. 
Oh, just kill. Don't question it. Uh, yeah. the, the highest. So that's, how you, that's how you receive moksha from life in Hinduism. By doing your duty as. By doing uh, your duty along. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And the highest caste, their role is to do what? Be leaders and priests? Yeah, they're not leaders. Even the kings are the warrior caste. Oh, uh, the kings are warrior caste. Yeah, so the priests. The priests, the, priest, the scholars, the only ones who are actually. Oh. Like, uh, like they are, they are like basically the gifted. They are like everything. They're just a direct men from God Himself. The, the and they they are the only ones who have the right to read Sanskrit and the Vedas. Wow. Okay, <laughs> let's go to the.